Here are the top stories for today, June 25, 2019. Malacanang has defended President Rodrigo Duterte's cautious stand on the incident between Filipino and Chinese boats in Recto Bank. Actor turned Ormoc Mayor Richard Gomez expressed his support to calls to declare late actor Eddie Garcia as a national artist. The PNP Highway Patrol Group has expressed support for motorcycle ride hailing firm Angkas as it starts its pilot run. And the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF has given their support in the Army's latest peace efforts in Lanao del Sur. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Malacanang has defended President Rodrigo Duterte's cautious stand on the incident between Filipino and Chinese boats in Recto Bank. The palace assures the president is balancing the country's interests and security in resolving the said issue. Miguel Hill has the story. Malacanang says national interest and security are the main reasons why President Rodrigo Duterte is taking a cautious stand on the Recto Bank incident. In a statement, Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo says the president strikes a balance between the interest of the nation and the country's security as against the threat of a potential war with another. He says Duterte maintains friendly and trade relations with other countries, even those with adversarial claims. Meanwhile, Senator Panfilo Lacson said a joint probe between the Philippines and China may be interpreted as a waiver of our right of ownership of Recto Bank. While Vice President Lenny Robredo said she prefers an investigation conducted by a third party. Panelo stressed anew that Duterte's foreign policy is based on reason and not emotion, unlike the president's critics. He said the president will continue to treat the Recto Bank issue as a navigation incident and that protocol on the issue will be observed in accordance with international law or domestic law. For the PNA Newsroom, I am... Miguel Hill. President Rodrigo Duterte thanked the Vietnamese fishermen who rescued Filipinos who were allegedly abandoned near the Recto Bank after being rammed by a Chinese vessel. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said the president expressed his sincere gratitude to Vietnam through Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Quan Phuc during the 34th ASEAN Summit on Sunday. In a statement, Panelo said, President Duterte took the occasion to thank the captain and crew of the Vietnamese fishing vessel who saved our fishermen near Recto Bank. This act of kindness and compassion will always be remembered by the Philippines and its people. Amid criticisms that Duterte has taken a tame approach to China's aggression, Panelo said his remarks underscored that the president is not beholden to or any other foreign country. Panelo also pointed that Duterte will always assert the country's sovereignty while respecting the rule of law and recognizing the sovereign equality of all nations. The Department of National Defense said it is more than willing to support the national government in resolving the water shortage problem. Defense spokesperson Arsenio Andolong Monday said DND is willing to help and work with other agencies that are primarily tasked with dealing with the water crisis since it could potentially become a national security issue if not controlled. Metro Manila and nearby provinces are suffering from daily rotational supply interruptions as the water level of Angat Dam in Bulacan, the reservoir supplying these areas, continues to decrease. Police arrested this morning a provincial director of TESDA, Basilan, for carrying explosives. The suspect, identified as Muida Hataman, yielded through a search warrant an improvised explosive device and material used to manufacture explosives. Police are investigating her links to the Abu Sayyaf following reports that she is a wife of a sub-commander. TESDA Secretary Isidro Peña meanwhile said that he will not tolerate any wrongdoing among the agency's personnel. He also expressed sadness over the arrest, adding that it may send the wrong messages to its clients. 
Hataman was fired as Supervising Technical Education and Skills Development Specialist in July 2012. She was later promoted as Director 3 in August 2013 and has been assigned in Basilan since then as Provincial Director. The Athletic Stadium at New Clark City, which will be the venue of the 30th SEA Games, is nearing its completion. Meanwhile, the relieved police for assaulting a subordinate has been fully removed from his post. More on these and other news around the Metro from Janice Cabe. Senators got a glimpse of the National Government Administrative Center in New Clark City, which includes the nearly completed 20,000-seater athletic stadium, the 2,000-seater aquatic center, and the 1.4-kilometer river park. These world-class facilities will be used for the Philippines' hosting of the 30th Southeast Asian Games this year. BCDA President and CEO Vince Dizon hailed the progress in New Clark City, saying full government support is key in any world-class development. Meanwhile, the release of the Pantawid Pasada fuel subsidy cards for 2018 is set for distribution on June 28. The Pantawid Pasada program, which is funded under the train law, provides 5,000 peso fuel subsidy to legitimate PUJ franchise owners. In other news, the PNP has assigned a new head to the Eastern Police District who will replace Police Brigadier General Christopher Tambungan. Tambungan will be replaced by Police Brigadier General Nulasco Bathan as the new EPD Director. Tambungan was earlier relieved after he was slapped with a complaint for assaulting a female cop. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Still to come? Nine students in Zambanga were injured after a covered court they are using as temporary classroom collapsed. And Sorsogon celebrates its first Kasag festival. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Ito ang Duterte ang duty. Ulat sa ginagawa ng Presidente. June 4, Martes, Holosulu. Binisita ni Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte ang mga sundalo sa Camp Teodulfo Bautista at pinarangalaan ang mga nasugatan sa inkwentro kontra Abu Sayyaf noong May 31 sa Patikul Sulu. June 6, Huebes, Davao City. Pinangunaan ng Pangulo ang selebrasyon ng Eidel Fitir. Allow me to take this moment to assure you that this administration will endeavor to preserve the fragile peace that we have built in this region that I call home. Allow me to take this moment to assure you that through the National Commission of Muslim Filipinos, we will consistently uphold the rights and welfare of all Muslim Filipinos and for that matter, for all Filipinos. June 10, Lunes, Pasay City. Nag-surprise inspection ng Pangulo sa Naiya Terminal 2 nang mabalitaan ang mga reklamong delayed at canceled flights. Malacanang. Nakipagpulong siya sa mga opisyal ng Philippine Health Insurance Corporation o PhilHealth. Kinagabihan ay pinulong naman niya ang kanyang gabinete para sa 38th Cabinet Meeting. June 12, Miyerkules, Lanao del Sur. Pinangunahan ng Pangulo ang pagdiriwang na ika-121 anibersaryo ng Araw ng Kalayaan. June 13, Huebes, General Santos City. Ipinamahagi ni Pangulong Duterte ang mga Certificate of Land Ownership Award sa may gitlabing 3,000 agrarian reform beneficiaries sa Region 12. Ako po si Secretary Martin Antanar at ito ang Duterte on Duty. Abangan sa susunod na linggo ang mga gagawin ng Pangulo. Actor-turned-Ormoc Mayor Richard Gomez 
has expressed his support to the call to declare late actor Eddie Garcia as national artist. Mayor Gomez on Monday said the recognition should have long been given to the late veteran actor due to his numerous contributions in the television movie industry and to the Filipino people. Aside from Gomez, other celebrities who supported the call are Senators-elect Lito Lapid and Bong de Villa, actress and Batangas representative Vilma Santos, and actors Christopher De Leon and Tirso Cruz III. Gomez is also calling out the production crew to learn first aid and for the production outfit to always have a standby medical team on locations. Eddie Garcia had an accident on the set of Rosang Agimat on June 8. He died on June 20. Consumers felt the volatile condition of the world market as local oil companies implement another hike in pump prices on Tuesday morning. In separate advisories, Filipina Shell, Petron Corporation, and PTT Philippines announced moderate price increases in their liquid fuels. Gasoline increased by 30 centavos per liter. Diesel moved up by 55 centavos, while kerosene rose by 45 centavos per liter. Oil executives said the recent upward direction in the international oil market was fueled by lingering uncertainty surrounding the stability of the Middle East as well as a protracted trade dispute among economic giants. The proposal by the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines or CAAP to improve the Lingayen Airport in Pangasinan will be implemented this year. Lingayen Airport officer in charge Elvis de la Cruz said the asphalt overlay of runway costs more than 37.8 million pesos. Among the projects to be implemented are the construction of runway canal, improvement of perimeter fence, and provision of additional septic tank. The construction of the fire station building and staff house were already completed. The concreting of the apron by the Department of Transportation was already done and lined up for final inspection. Meanwhile, De La Cruz admitted that the proposal to extend the airport's runway in order to achieve the standard size for commercial flights are still waiting for approval. The airport's runway measuring 1,040 meters is currently catering to general aviation. Kaap is proposing to extend the runway to 1,520 meters to accommodate commercial flights. Nine students were injured when the covered court they were using as temporary classrooms collapsed in Barangay Sinubong, Zamboanga City. Class advisor Shirley Fonoliera was reportedly conducting classes when the roof of the covered court collapsed. Sinubong National High School principal Joel San Juan Garcia said the class advisor decided to hold classes at the covered court as rainwater leaked through the roof of her classroom. The principal also disclosed that the covered court was not yet officially turned over to them, although the project has been completed in January. The injured students were taken to the Labuan District Hospital for treatment. Thousands of spectators and participants were drawn in several provinces over the weekend to join in the celebration of various native religious festivals. Let's know more about these from Benj Bondoc. In Nueva Ecija, residents of Barangay Bibiklat in Alyaga Town celebrated on Monday the Pagsasan Juan or Taong Putik Festival. Participants wore banana leaves and vines and covered their bodies with mud in honor of the beggar-like Saint John the Baptist. Bishop Safronio Bancud of the Diocese of Cabanatuan reminded devotees that Pagsasan Juan is beyond being a cultural and tourist attraction and that they must stand with humility and practice love for God and others starting at home. In Salsagon, hundreds enjoyed the boodle fight of crabs as part of the celebration of the first Kasag Festival last Saturday, June 22. The celebration honors St. John the Baptist, the village's patron saint. It also promotes the abundance of fresh and delicious crabs in their village. In Marawi City, around 6,000 Muslims joined the three-day Juhur or religious gathering held on June 21 to 23. Marawi residents were urged to welcome the Juhur as it focuses on how Muslims surrender their lives to what Allah wants. This year's Juhur is the first after the Marawi siege in 2017, with last year's gathering being held in Luzon for security reasons. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. Up next, 
The PNP Highway Support Group supports the pilot testing of ANCAS. And the Armed Forces of the Philippines partners with MILF to achieve peace in the region. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Sa pagdalo ni Pangulong Duterte sa 34th ASEAN Summit dito sa Bangkok, Thailand, binigyan din niya ang kahalagahan ng United at Stronger ASEAN. Inihayag din niya ang kanyang mga pangamba sa mga kasalukuyang challenges na kinakaharap ng rehiyon, kabilang na ang illegal drugs, terorismo, climate change at ang US-China trade war. Kaya naman hinikayat niya ang mga ASEAN leaders na i-maximize ang mga benepisyo ng Fourth Industrial Revolution para sa tuloy-tuloy na paglago ng rehiyon. Hinikayat din niya ang mga ASEAN leaders na magkaroon ng bagong vision para sa rehiyon at i assert ang rehiyon bilang sentro ng evolving regional architecture at manindigan laban sa mga kasalukuyang hamong kinakaharap ng buong ASEAN region. The PNP Highway Patrol Group has expressed support for motorcycle ride-hailing firm Ancas as the company prepares for its six-month pilot run by the end of June. The pilot run aims to assess the safety level of motorcycle taxis in line with the issue of legalizing motorcycles as public utility vehicles. 27,000 accredited biker partners will be retained to ensure that they meet the very high safety standards. HPG Chief Brigadier General Roberto Fajardo said they share the same mandate with ANCAS, which is to ensure the safety of the metro's highways for the benefit of commuters and motorists. ANCAS assures its passengers that it will not impose fare increases amid the implementation of its safety features. And in our foreign news, at least five people were reported killed and 100 more were injured as several train carriages derailed and fell off a bridge in Mulvibazar district in Bangladesh late last Sunday. One of the carriages of the Upaban Express heading from the city of Sailet to Dhaka reportedly fell into a canal while two others fell near its banks. Five ambulances and 13 fire engines arrived at the site of the incident while those injured were sent to nearby hospitals. The train crash resulted in the suspension of railway traffic between Silet and other districts. The police have launched an investigation into the incident. And in sports, Gilas Pilipinas coach Yen Giao looks to bring Kiefer Ravena as a replacement to Jason Castro for the starting point guard spot in the FIBA World Cup this August. The six-foot combo guard was slapped with an 18-month ban by FIBA for testing positive of prohibited substances during a drug test prior to a FIBA World Cup qualifiers game last year. Ravenna was, however, allowed by FIBA to go back to practice two months before his suspension ends. Northport rookie Robert Bollick is also joining the national team as they resume practice for the FIBA World Cup. Bollick, who is a member of the Gilas Cadets pool, got the green light to take part in the Gilas practice from Northport's team management. Colombian rookie CJ Perez is also joining Gila's practice, although his primary concern is to back up players injured before the FIBA World Cup from August 31st to September 15. The government continues to reach out to insurgents to make peace and bring them back to the folds of the law. The Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or MILF, has given their support in the Army's latest peace efforts in Lanao del Sur. Sweet Lukman has the story. As part of the Armed Forces of the Philippines program to prevent and counter violent extremism, the 103rd Infantry Haribon Brigade has brought its peace projects to Barangay Padas in Pagayawan Town and Sultan Dumalundong Municipality in Lanao del Sur. These peace projects include providing playground sets and educational programs 
for the children as well as livelihood programs for the communities. It can be recalled that it was in Barangay Padas where Abu Dar sought refuge while hiding from military operations and at the same time recruited some locals to join ISIS. Out of 163 Maoti returnees, three came from Barangay Padas. Brigadier General Romeo Bronner Jr. said, There are still five more members being convinced to surrender to the government. The 103rd Brigade has partnered with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF in this project since the 101 base command of the MILF is there. General Bronner also disclosed that it was MILF fighters who first tried the playground sets, the first playground facilities in the barangay. Bronner said the AFP would also do the same to Sultan Dumalundong town where members of Maoti ISIS are sighted. An encounter between the Maoti ISIS group and the AFP occurred in January in the two municipalities. So we would like to make the communities part of the solution, Bronner explained. We are making the community part of the solution. And sometimes the community are the MIL of communities. The USAID, on the other hand, constructed a water system in Barangay Padas complete with solar panels to be able to pump and store water in the tank to give the residents safe and clean drinking water. For PNA Newsroom, Sweet Lukman, Philippine Information Agency. And in our weather update, Pagasa said a low-pressure area was spotted off Aurora Province is likely to intensify into a tropical depression. Luzon and western Visayas will have monsoon rains enhanced by the potential tropical cyclone over the Philippine Sea east of Luzon. The rest of the country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers and thunderstorms today until Friday, June 28. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. And here's another look at today's biggest stories. Malacanang has defended President Rodrigo Duterte's cautious stand on the incident between Filipino and Chinese boats in Recto Bank. Actor turned Ormoc Mayor Richard Gomez expressed his support to calls to declare late actor Eddie Garcia as a national artist. The PNP Highway Patrol Group has expressed support for motorcycle ride hailing firm Ancas as it starts its pilot run. And the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF has given their support in the Army's latest peace efforts in Lanao del Sur. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.